<laughs> so we're at Curtis Institute of Music in Philadelphia, USA, and it is one of the most prestigious music schools in all of the entire world. And here we have Ray Chen. Uh, yeah, what are you doing? Just <laughs> doodling. <laughs> and yeah, so we're gonna have a quick talk with Ray. Let's see how that goes. Hi Ray. Hi Daniel. Uh, thanks going? so much for uh, taking out the time to uh, hang out with us and play music. Oh, my pleasure. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I was uh, born in Taiwan and uh, grew up in Brisbane, Australia. I used to have an Australian accent. I moved to the States, though I kind of lost it. However, when I'm back in Australia, this is what I sound like. Yeah, mate. How's it going? It's, uh, it's good. Yeah. I moved to America when I was about 15, 16 years old, and I uh, came to study at Curtis, which is where we are right now. And uh, yeah, it's been a wild ride since. Uh, I won a couple of competitions that led on to uh, a career, a soloist career. So now I travel, spend my time traveling the world and playing concerts all over the world. So tell us a little bit about how you began and what made you interested in violin. Well, I started violin when I was four years old, and uh, I had this toy guitar that I liked to kind of strum along with. And then one day I suddenly had this idea to put the guitar underneath my chin and put together with a chopstick pretend to play this, this new instrument. So that's that my parents thought it was really adorable and bought me a violin for my fourth birthday. So that's how I began playing the violin. Tell us a little about your violin then. Uh, this violin is a Stradivarius, so it's uh, made in 1715, it's 301 years old. And this one is uh, was once named by, was once owned by a guy called uh, Joseph Jokic, who was a famous Hungarian violinist who knew Brahms and Schumann and Brook, a lot of composers who all kind of were dedicated their violin to him. So he was a pretty important guy. Great. So how are you bridging the gap between traditional, classically trained musicians and also people who take music as Well, for me, I think relevance, being able to relate, is the key here. So right now, that means being on social media, being relevant there, and uh, doing sometimes funny, funny videos, uh, short funny videos. I do a lot of those on Facebook, and I try to kind of show a different side of classical music uh, that people might not have necessarily in their minds as the stereotypical thought about what classical music might be. I that, you know, classical musicians are actually really funny people. They're just oftentimes too shy or kind of too intimidated to show their real kind of natural self to the audiences. But nowadays, I think it's really important people want to see a more real side. They want to feel more connected. Uh, so I think that's, that's I just really try to show who I am as a person. So if you guys are interested in checking out social media, you can look at the links below. Really funny stuff. I follow him on everything. Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat. Snapchat is hilarious. So you should really check it out. I don't send him a message, say hi, tell him Daniel sent you. And yeah. That's all. Can we see there? Hi. Uh... Hey, what's cooler than playing Pokemon Go? All I know, let's play a Vinyaski duo. <laughs> <laughs>